Please be advised that on today's episode, you will witness me, a man who doesn't really know what he's doing, attempt to make an aluminum leg hub. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so to get started on this project, I drew my template out in AutoCAD and printed it. And since it's pretty small, it's only six and a half inch diameter, I was able to fit it just onto uh, an eight and a half sheet of 11, or eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and uh, print it out. Uh, from there, this was an older template that I had. I went and printed it and I cut it out on a piece of uh, three quarter inch MDF that I had. Um, glued it on and did my test fits on the R2-D2. Found out that my bolt pattern was about an eighth of an inch off. So the bolt pattern that I'm using is five and a half or five and one eighth inch in diameter. Um, obviously this is a lot nicer and would be a lot lighter. However, I don't have any real tooling to be doing this. All I have is a drill press. I have a router table but I don't have any actual uh, milling machine or anything like that. So what I would recommend is just printing this out and to cut the center out, I went and got a four inch diameter um, hole saw. So it's a bimetal hole saw, which is good enough for me. I think this was around $20 uh, from Home Depot. And it did come with the uh, drill bit for the center bore uh, which is nice because once you find the center of it, this will help you to guide all of your stuff in. So the very first step that you really need to do is, you know, get your template set up and try and find the center of your uh, aluminum that you've got. So because the aluminum is already the correct diameter, I don't have to do anything with that. So you can order pieces like this. It's six and a half inch diameter, and it's a, it was a 6061. So if you watched my other video on making a um, dome plate, you'll see uh, how I actually find the centers of this. So obviously if I had a lathe or something like that where it's always centered, it would be much easier to see, but uh, I don't. So I'm going to do this the only way that I know how. And that's by finding a cord, um, which is basically just two points across, and then going from the center of that and drawing a perpendicular line. So it's pretty simple. So what I'll do is I'll try and find like a four inch cord. So again, I'm just gonna use this ruler here. So it's got four inches. Now let's use a five inch cord, it's a little easier. So from there we can kind of see, okay, I'll just make a little scribe mark. And then on that I need to find two and a half inches because that's the center point. Which is right there. Okay, so it might be a little hard to see the scribe line. Yeah, almost impossible to see the scribe line. But uh, trust me, it's there, I can see it. And it's the most important thing. So again, we'll just find any other point. It doesn't matter where you go on this because by finding the center of that line and drawing a perpendicular line to it, it's actually gonna create two intersecting points. And that two intersecting points is what we really care about because that's gonna be the center. So let me just kinda mark that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my triangle. I don't know if I can show that properly, but from there, I'm just going to line it up on here as best I can. And scribe my line going up. 
And then on this one, we'll do the same thing. Get it straight on there. Inscribe your line. And right here is the center point. That's where it intersected. So, to make sure that it is the center point, we're going to use my calipers. You could just use the ruler. We'll just use the ruler first, just to make sure we get a point. So from here to here, it should be uh, 3.25. There we go, 3.25 right on. 325 right on. 325. Yeah, that's perfect. So now that we've got our uh, center point, what we want to do is punch it so we don't lose it. So I've got my punch. All we're going to do is just punch it in. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but we got our center point. Okay, once we have that center point, we're just gonna go ahead and use our template. So again, our center point being here, I'm just gonna try and locate it roughly with this so I can have this in the correct location. And then from here, all we need to do now is punch our holes. And there we go. So now we've got our four bolt holes, our pattern, and we have the center part drill or ready to be drilled and we'll be good to go. kind of see the taper on there. So I have it set up now that um, I'm going to do the four inch hole. Uh, it has a pilot bit in it, so we'll use that to get it all started. Uh, if you remember from my previous uh, beginning intro, I got rid of those really junky yellow clamps and went to a little bit more of a robust uh, you know metal C clamp so right now we're gonna just kinda drill the pilot hole and we're gonna get a scribe line of this so that I can uh, bore out like another hole that'll allow for the metal shavings to actually get out um, and exit down there so let's get it started scribe line around there now so I'm going to swap out this bit so I can drill some uh, relief holes. Okay, so I switched back to the four inch hole bit and now we'll try and go about halfway down and then we can flip it over since we have that uh, pilot hole bit and uh, go from the other side. That way I don't uh, risk going right into my drill press uh, table here. see it 
took a little while to really go through that thing. It probably took me about 10 minutes or so. A lot of cleanup, uh, backing off because my drill can't torque through it. Um, but we got a really nice clean hole. All right, so I kind of cleaned it up a little bit so you can see it's a little rough inside, but it's real smooth. I mean, once we uh, sand the inside a bit, it's gonna be real nice. Um, you can see kind of like, oops, sorry, where the parting line is here. This is kind of where the drill uh, met up with the other hole. And, you know, it's quite clean. So what I'll end up using is I made this little drum sander thing, which is just a couple pieces of uh, plywood that I cut out and glued together. Um, and then I just took a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, yeah, 80 grit, and glued it to the outside and just stick this back into my uh, drill press and I'll go along the inside of it, try and smooth it down a little bit. And I'll also use um, my router, like just a, a hand router, to try and get that uh, to be really nice and kind of give it a milled sheen on the inside. So the nice thing is that we're left with these big chunks of aluminum that we can make something else out of, maybe some uh, leg uh, buttons or something like that. Um, but we'll get to that another time. So for now, what we need to do is just kind of do the final cleanup. So you can see just after a couple of minutes, it's already starting to get a lot nicer on the inside there. It's getting nice and shiny. We took that little edge off. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, I'm just gonna put a little uh, chamfer along the, the edges here just to take that sharp, harsh edge off, and I'm gonna do that on my router table. So I'm gonna set that up. Okay, so over here at my router table, I've set up a little a chamfer bit, and what I'm gonna do now is just run it along the inside to take that harsh line off. So again, you gotta be real careful because a router will take your finger off if you're not careful. I don't know if you can kind of see, but we took that harsh line off and just put a little chamfer on it similar to what we did on these holes. So we'll do that on both sides and then we'll do the outside too. chamfered edges. I don't know if you can see it. Got it on the inside and out. So now we'll just do a lot of sanding and we'll bring this down so it looks all nice and shiny. And then I'll brush it up, get my brushed aluminum look, and we'll be done. So the last step in the whole process is just to sand it down a little bit. Um, I started out with something really coarse because uh, I did have a lot of like really uh, big teeth marks on here. Now I don't really care too much about the surface of this because it's going to be hidden, same with the other side, but I wanted to bring it down so it's roughly smooth. So I started out with a 40 grit, but on the uh, outside of it, I started it with a 180 grit. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, 180 grit. Uh, and then I just kind of bring the, the outside of it down fairly nice. And then I finished it off. I, I have like an 800 wet sand in here. So I did that. And the very last step is just to do, um, use my Scotch-Brite pad and we'll get the uh, aluminum sheen. So let me grab that and we'll do it. Okay, just kind of gave it a nice little brushed look to it and that's it you got yourself an aluminum hub 
So total price for these, um, I guess the material alone was around $66. Uh, yeah, for 60 bucks, I'm pretty happy with this. So hopefully this will help you and get you motivated out there to build some uh, aluminum pieces for yourself. Keep building.